Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. Starting today, you and I will work together to get ourselves ready for the TS exam. The book that we'll be using is the one that I'm holding in my hand here, the official study manual, 2020-2021. Make sure that you have the book in front of you always. If you do not own this book, or if you do not own this book, purchase one immediately. You are going to need it. Make sure you buy 2020-2021 edition. On the blackboard, I have put down the actual title, the official study manual for T's, and here is the ISBN number, Inter International Standard Book Number. This is what you. This is all you need. Nine seven eight one five six five three three one nine nine zero. Let's get going, shall we? Enough of the talk. So for the for today, if you don't have the book in front of you because it's the first time you're watching it, it's fine. But buy it immediately. All right. We are on. We're going to begin our story on page number one hundred thirty-one because that's where the math part begins. Let's get going. If you're also interested, it does not hurt to do an extra preparation, a little bit of extra preparation. And another thing that you have to understand is that math is math. Math does not change just because it was done eight years ago. So if you're interested, on my channel you will find a series of video which is based on the fifth edition of T's, T's 5, fifth edition which came out in 2012. And there are 80 videos on my channel you will find day one through 80. Just simply, anytime you want to look for something, simply search for, just go in the search box, type in my name Kishwani, and just type in T's, math, day one, it will pop right up. You understand? Let's begin. We are on page number 131 and there are four or five examples there that they have done for ourselves and we can simply walk through them very quickly. Okay, here's the first one. So we are given 35% and we are being asked to convert it into fraction. Let's see what we can do. How do we convert 35% in a fraction? Whenever, whenever we are asked to convert any percentage in fraction or decimal, doesn't matter. The thing that we need to understand is this thing. very simple concept. What we need to understand is what does this word literally mean? Percent. We've heard it all the time. What does it mean literally? Literally, it means exactly what it says. It means per 100. Cent is where the English word century comes from. Per 100. So if somebody says, if somebody says 7%, that means 7 over 100. If somebody says 33%, that's 33 over 100. If somebody is talking about 25.8%, it's just 25.8 over 100. That's all it is. Here we have 35%. It simply means 35 over 100. So if the question asks us to convert this percentage into fraction, this is it. But in many cases, you'll find that the answers will be reduced to the lowest form. It will not be left in a row state. This is a row state. For example, if the, for example, if the final answer turns out to be 3 over 6, and if you look at the answer choices, you're not going to find 3 over 6 in the answer choices. It will be in a reduced form. You have to divide top and bottom by 3. 3 becomes 1 and 6 becomes 2. It's 1 half. Same thing you have to do here. Do you find any common factor? Do you find any common factor between 35 and 100? And the answer is yes. Both 35 and 100 are multiple of, 100, multiple of 5. Both of them are multiple of 5. And if it makes your life easier, if it makes your life easier, break this 100, write this 100, instead of writing it as 100, write it as 10 times 10. It is still 100. That way you don't have to deal with 100 at once, you can deal with 10 at a time. So let's divide top and bottom by 5. If you divide the top by 5, 35 has how many 5? 35 has 7 5. 7 5s are 35. 7 5s are 35. And again, if you have trouble understanding the language that I just, 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 just I use, this is what we're saying here. Seven, seven, fives are 35. That's how we speak. And 10 is made up of 2, 5. 10 is made up of 2, 5. If you divide 10 by 2, we, we get, we, if you divide 10 by 5, we get 2. And that's it. We just do to write top and bottom once. We don't keep going everything. If there's 10 different numbers, we don't know about every one of them. It does it. So it's 2 times, two times 10, which is 20. So 35%. When it's reduced in the fraction form, in its reduced form, is simply 7, 7 over 2 times 10, which is 20. 
There we go. And that's all there was. If they ask us to convert this into decimal form, 35%, 35% again would be 35 over 100. And when we're dividing something by 100, if we're dividing something by 100, we simply have to move the decimal two spots. So we have 35 right now. Right now we have 35. And where is the decimal sitting? Where is the decimal? There is a decimal here. The decimal is right here. It's right here. This is what it is. Even though it wasn't written there, we don't write it like this, but it was right there. All we have to do is pick up the bloody thing and move it two spots. One, two, right here. It's going to end up here. So 35 divided by 100, 35 divided by 100 is simply equals to, is simply equals to 0.35. And that's all it is. It equals 0.35. Let's do the next one. B. B says 28.4. Let's see what we can do with 28.4%. 28.4%. And again, our job is to convert it into decimal and into a fraction. Convert it into decimal and fraction. Let's see what we can do, shall we? So we take our 28.4 whatever number that is given to us if we see a percent side next to it that means percent means out of 100 there you go voila now if they ask us to convert it into fraction we can't leave it like this this is in a raw state we have to cook it we have to refine it we have to make it a little bit better we have to make it a little bit more presentable and the requirement here is that it has to be in a reduced form and before we can worry about reducing it uh, reducing the fraction the top has to be a whole number, uh, they have to be whole numbers. We cannot have decimal in either places. So the question is how do you convert 28.4 into a whole number? It's very simple. If we take 28.4 and multiply it by 10, multiply it by 10, we can move this decimal one spot this way and it will become 284. But we can't just multiply the top by 10. Whatever you do to the top, we must have to do the same thing to the bottom because otherwise the value will change. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking the quantity and we're multiplying it by 10 over 10. 10 over 10 over 10 is just 1. So multiplying something by 1 doesn't change its value. Now we can begin our work. 28.4 will simply become 284 over 100 times the 10. 100 times the 10. That's all. Now let's divide top and bottom by 4. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. Is our top and bottom divisible by 4? How do we know if a number is divisible by 4? Well, if we know a number is divisible by 4 if the last two digits of the number are divisible by 4. Last two digits is 84. 84 is divisible by 4, which means 284 is divisible by 4. This, is, this thing that I just uh, described is something that you will find again on my, on my channel. Look for basic math. Basic math. If you are poor in math, and if you do need some math, uh, some help in elementary math, this series is called Basic Math for a reason, because I start out with very, very fundamental things. There are 100 videos, of course, the thing, as things progress, they become a little bit more difficult, but I think you'll get a lot out of it if your math foundation is not very strong. Again, just search, just type in the search bar Keshwani, Basic Math, Day 1, and we'll start with teaching you how to do multiplication table and then uh, gradually how to do division and so forth. And somewhere in the series we talk about division rules. How do we know if a number is divisible by 3 or 4 or 5 or 6? We talk about all of those. Let's divide top and bottom by 4, okay? Enough of the talk. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. How many 4 does 2 have? 2 has no 4. 2 has no 4. 2 is too puny to have 4. So what does he do? Well, he goes to his neighbor, he knocks on the door, and 8 comes out and, ace, uh, and 2 says to 8, listen, I'm too puny, I can't take this guy on. This, uh, this 4 wants to fight with me, I can't take him on. Why don't we gang up? It's sure, we can gang up. 2 and 4 join together, become 28. And 28 can give 7 punches to 4. 7 times 4 is 24. 7 fours are 28. You see that? And then we go to this 4. How many 4 does this 4 have? This 4 has 1 4. Since we divided the top by 4, we must divide the bottom by 4. 
How many four does 100 have? 100 has 25 fours. I'm not going to walk through to walk you through the whole thing. You already know it. The 25 times four is 100. That's it. We don't do both of them. We're done. So the final answer is on the top we end up with 71, and on the bottom we end up with 25 times 10, which is 250. So we have converted this number into a fraction. Now let's do it in decimal. Do, converting in decimal is very simple. We divide 28.4 percent means 28.4 over 100. And since we're dividing it by 100, we take out 28.4, our original number. And since we're dividing it by 100, we're going to pick up the decimal. I'm just going to move it two spots. Pick it up and just move it two spots. One and two. Voila. It, it ends up here. And you put a zero in front of it to make it conspicuous, to make it prominent, to make it noticeable. So the final answer is 28. If somebody asks you to convert 28.4% into decimal, this, this is the stuff you have to go through first. You have to convert 28.4% as in this form, and then when you're dividing by 100, we move it to decimal places, and the final answer is 28.4% 28 in decimal is 2, 2 point, 0 point, 0, 0 point 0.284. Let's do the next one. C. C says, 55%. Again, we're going to first convert it into, well, not necessarily first, but we're going to convert it into fraction and in decimal. Do you understand? Let's do the fraction first. Again, 55% simply means what it says. It means 55 per 100. Can we reduce it? The answer is yes. They are both multiple of 5. How many 5 does 5 have? 5 has 1 5. How many 5 does 5 have? 5 has 1 5. How many 5 does 10 have? 10 has 2 5s. How many 5 does 0 have? 0 has no 5s. Well, that's how simple it is. In other words, in other words, 100 divided by 5 is 20, and 55 divided by 5 is 11. There you go, we're done. It's 11 over 20. 55% in the fraction form is 11 over 20. 55%, 55% in decimal form would simply be, well, we first write down our 55, and we ask ourselves, where is the decimal? We have to move it two spots to the left. Where is the decimal? I don't see any bloody decimal, do you? It is there. It's right here. It is right here. We pick it up, we pick up the bloody thing, and move it two spots. One, two. Right there. Voila, that's it. We end up with, we end up with 0 0.55. 0 0.55. Let's do the next one, shall we? We are on page number 131 in the book. If you have the book in front of you, you will see exactly where we are. The next one that they show in the chart is 100%. I'm not going to do 100%. That's just bloody stupid. Number D. It says... It says 0 0.09%. 0 the rule is that after the decimal, if a number is written, for example, like this, it is not read. It is not read as point 0.123. That is not how it should be read. That is the wrong way to read it. It should not be read as point 0.123. The rule is that if it's written, if if it is anything that appears after decimal, the rule is that anything that appears after decimal, each digit must be read individually. Each digit must be read individually. So it should be read as 0.123. So if somebody asks us this, this number, this number is read as, well this one of course you read it together, 783. 783, we don't say 780 obviously. 783.123, that's how it's read. That is how it should be read. So here we have 0.09%. 0.09% is simply 0 0.09, and percent means over 100. Let's do the decimal first, shall we? So we first write down the way it is given to us. The way it is given to us is this. And since we're dividing it by, since we're dividing it by 100, since we're dividing it by 100, the decimal will have to be moved two spots to the left. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Move it two spots to the left. We pick it up. We pick up the bloody thing and we move it one, two. 
it ends up here. It ends up here, there's a spot here, we put a zero here, and that's it, we are done. So it becomes, and again, after the decimal, before the decimal rather, we, there should be a preceding zero to make it easier, to make it easier to be noticed. Otherwise, somebody might miss the decimal. So again, that's just a convention. So we, re, we, we write it as zero point, zero point, zero, 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 three, zero, 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 nine, voila. Alright, let's do the same thing in fraction. Let's do the same thing in fraction. 0 0.09 percent. Percent means over 100. Now since we want it in fraction, which means we need to have both top and bottom in whole number. In a whole number form, on the bottom we do have whole number, but top we do not. The question is, how do we convert 0 0.09 Point zero 0.09 into a whole number. Well, if we can move, if we can pick up this decimal and move it two spots to the right, we'll be all set. If we can move it two spots to the right, we'll be all set. And how do we move it two spots to the right? By multiplying it by 100. If you multiply it by 100, if you multiply it by 100, point zero 0.09 will become 9. If you're going to multiply top by 100, we must multiply the bottom by 100. Whatever we do to the top, we must do to the bottom. So 0 0.09 times 100 will become 9, and on the top and on the bottom we'll end up with 100 times 100. 100 times 100 will be 1 with 4 zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1 with 4 zero is of course 10,000. So this figure, if somebody asks us to convert 0 0.09% into, 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 into fraction, the answer would be 9 over 10,000. 9 over 10,000. Now, listen, the way I had made my plan here, in my notes here, I thought I was going to go, go to the next page. On, on the next page, if you turn the page on page 132, there are some problems there. As I was putting it together, I thought I was going to go to the next page at this point and cover the problems on the next page. It turns out I'm not going to do that. We're not going to rush through it. We are not here to rush, we are not here to impress anybody, and we are not here to simply go through motions. I want you to learn the material. I want you to learn the material, have the solid foundation, have a sound foundation in, in basic arithmetic. That's what it is, it's basic arithmetic. And if you don't have that, you can learn through these videos, or better yet, if you wish to come to me, if you, want, if you would like to work with me, if you would like me to work with you, you can hire, hire my services as your tutor. All you have to do is simply send me an email at keshwaniprep at icloud.com or you can visit my website. But today we're going to stop here. What I'm going to do in these videos is that we're not going to make very long videos. I don't want to have 20 minutes long, half an hour long videos. I want some videos where you can just sit down in one sitting, maybe with a cup of tea for a few minutes and watch one video in 10-15 minutes and get something out of it. Uh, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to stop right here. We're going to meet again tomorrow. And we'll do the problem that you see on the next page. Alright? I'll see you tomorrow on day two. Bye now.